Hi everyone, this is Dr. Manu Krishnan K. And today we discuss about the Eustachian tube or the auditory tube and the mastoid and drum. So the first one that is the Eustachian tube or the auditory tube, which is a trumpet shaped pharyngeotympanic tube. So by the term pharyngeotympanic tube, that denotes the connections. So the Eustachian tube connects between the tympanic cavity or the middle ear cavity with that of the nasopharynx. That's why it has got the other name that is pharyngeotympanic tube because it connects between these two places. And it is 4 cm in length which is directed forwards, downwards and medially and it is composed of two parts that is the bony part and the cartilaginous part. So it's very easy to remember. It is trumpet shaped which connects between the two, uh, the middle ear cavity or the tympanic cavity and the nasopharynx which is 4 cm length and it is composed of two parts, the bony part and the cartilaginous part. So here you have a representation of the Eustachian tube. You can see the auricle or pinna, the external auditory meatus, then the middle ear cavity separated by the tympanic membrane and this middle ear cavity on the anterior wall there is an opening which connects the middle ear cavity to that of the nasopharynx here. So this nasopharyngeal communication is termed as the Eustachian tube. So this tube which opens from the anterior wall of middle ear cavity or tympanic cavity which opens into the nasopharynx is termed as the Eustachian tube or the auditory tube. So which is composed of two parts this area here is the bony part of Eustachian tube and this area here is the cartilaginous part of Eustachian tube or the auditory tube. So let's have a look into the details of each parts. So the first part is the bony part which forms the posterior and lateral one third of the tube which is 12 millimeter in length and it lies in the petrous part of the temporal bone near the tympanic plate. So this red colored areas which I have highlighted here that is the important points which you should not miss when you are writing regarding the parts of the Eustachian tube. That's why I have highlighted them. So the 12 millimeter length then it lies in the petrous part of the temporal bone near the tympanic plate and the lateral end of the bony part is wide and it opens on the anterior wall of the middle ear cavity or the tympanic cavity. So that is the opening in the middle ear cavity which is placed on the anterior wall and the relations of the bony part of the Eustachian tube are as follows. So try to remember at least one one relations from each part. So the superior relation is the canal for the tensor tympani. This term might be familiar for you, right? The tensor tympani we have discussed about the muscles present in the middle ear cavity. So one was the tensor tympani and the other one was the stapedius. So the tensor tympani passes superior to that of the bony part of Eustachian tube. Medially it is related to the carotid canal, laterally it is related to the coda tympani, the spine of sphenoid, auriculotemporal nerve and the temporomandibular joint. The second part is the cartilaginous part and it forms the anterior and medial two-third of the tube which is 25 millimeter in length and it lies in the sulcus tubae. So the term sulcus means a groove. So the sulcus tubae is nothing but a groove between the greater wing of the sphenoid and the apex of the petrous temporal bone. And this sulcus tubae is the groove in which the eustachian tube, the cartilaginous part is lying and the relations as I have told earlier the relations you have to try to you should try to remember at least two three relations so here the androlateral relations are the tensor villi palatini the mandibular nerve the aortic ganglion the coda tympani and the middle meningeal artery so these are the androlateral relations while the posteromedial relations are the petrous temporal, the levator villi palatini. So try to remember at least four of these relations so that you can easily write down for your exams. 
So these headings are very important when you are writing an exam. So try to just arrange your answers in a proper pattern. So it has to be classified into separate headings and it has to be managed properly. So here this is about the cartilaginous part of your stake and tube and we will have a look into the arterial supply that is the ascending pharyngeal and the middle meningeal arteries will be supplying the eustachian tube while the venous drainage is through the pharyngeal and the pterygoid plexuses and the lymphatics is to the retropharyngeal nodes and the nerve supply the two parts are supplied separately the bony part is supplied by the glossopharyngeal nerve while the cartilaginous part is supplied by nervous spinosis which is a branch of the mandibular nerve. So this is about the eustachian tube. So let's have a look into the functions of the eustachian tube. So the first function is that provides communication for the middle ear cavity with the exterior environment. So it provides a communication. So the middle ear cavity is a closed space which is having a small opening which gives an external communication that is the auditory tube and the second function is it maintains the air pressure on both sides of the tympanic membrane so being a closed cavity the middle ear cavity is uh, subjected to the air pressure so if the outside pressure is increasing then there will be like a, a push over the tympanic membrane so to maintain the internal pressure within the middle ear cavity so once the auditory tube is open that pressure will be balanced on the internal part of the middle ear cavity as well as the external auditory canal so that pressure difference will be maintained properly by the opening of the eustachian tube so that is the second function and usually the tube is closed so but sometimes it opens during the swallowing yawning sneezing and by the action of the tensor and levator villi palatine muscles so by the action of these muscles during these movements the auditory tube or the eustachian tube will be opening and that's how it maintains the air pressure and that's how it maintains the communication so this is about the eustachian tube we are concluding here with the functions so I think I hope you remember about the eustachian tube where it is placed and what is the shape the trumpet shaped and which is uh, like having two parts the bony part and the cartilaginous part and we have discussed about the parts and uh, its relations and we have covered the functions now so let's move on to the next topic that is the mastoid andrum so the tympanic or mastoid andrum it is a small circular air filled space which is situated in the posterior part of the petrous temporal bone so in the petrous temporal bone itself there is a small circular air filled spaces and uh, that is in the space uh, like shape of a small p which is 1 cm in diameter and the mastoid andrum communicates with the epitympanic creases of middle ear cavity through the aditus opening so while discussing the middle ear cavity or tympanic cavity we have told about the separate areas the epitympanic creases then the mesotympanum hypotympanum all these things we have discussed in the previous classes so the mastoid andrum that is a small circular air filled space is communicating with the epitympanic creases through a small opening called as the aditus which is present on the posterior wall of tympanic cavity or the middle ear cavity so this is the representation of the tympanic or mastoid andrum so here you can see that it's a cross sectional image where you can see the bony covering and here you can see small circular air cells so this area which is a small circular air filled space is termed as the mastoid andrum and the mastoid andrum is opening into the middle ear cavity to the posterior wall through this opening that is the aditus so the mastoid andrum which opens into the middle ear cavity on the posterior wall through the aditus opening 
and here what I have represented is the external auditory canal let us keep it like that itself. So, here there is an interesting fact to remember the structure you can see this image here where this whole apparatus can be compared to that of a gun compared to that of a handgun. So, the handle is formed by the mastoid and drum, the trigger area by the middle ear cavity and here you can see the outlet. So, it has a say shape of a gun, handgun. So, you can easily remember and draw it. So, this one is the handle and here the trigger and this outlet. So, this is regarding the mastoid and drum structure. So, I hope you got an idea. So, let us have a detailed description about the same. So, the boundaries of the mastoid andrum. Superiorly, it is bounded by the tegment tympani, inferiorly by the mastoid process containing the mastoid air cells. So, here you can see the here mastoid process, this is the mastoid process containing the mastoid air cells and superiorly you can see the tegment tympani here and anteriorly it communicates with the epitympanic creases anteriorly you can see this is the epitympanic creases which is the middle ear cavity the upper part is epitympanic creases. So, it is communicating with the epitympanic creases by the aditus opening then posteriorly separated by a thin plate of bone from the sigmoid sinus that I cannot show you here in this representation. So, this is the mastoid process which is a small projection you can feel just behind your ear. So, if you just use your finger to palpate behind your ear where you can find a small projection downwards and that is called as a mastoid process. So, inside that mastoid process is the location of the mastoid andron. Medially, the boundary is formed by the petrous temporal bone. So, that is obvious because it is located in the petrous temporal bone then the laterally it is bounded by a part of the squamous temporal bone. So, the temporal bone is having some different parts one is the squamous part and another, another one is petrous part that is why that differentiation is there. So, that we will discuss when we are uh, studying the osteology of the temporal bone. So, the mastoid air cells it is a series of intercommunicating spaces of variable size present within the mastoid process and the vessels lymphatic and nerves supplied by the posterior tympanic artery and uh, it, it is drained into the mastoid emissary vein or the posterior articular vein or to the sigmoid sinus. So, these are the venous drainage and the lymphatics is through the posterior auricular and upper deep cervical lymph nodes and the nerve supply is by the glossopharyngeal and meningeal nerves. So, this is regarding the mastoid andrum. Hope you have got an idea about what is mastoid andrum. It is a three mark question. They may like ask for the short answer type questions. So, that time you should include all these headings and that is how you have to explain the mastoid andrum. So, this is regarding these two topics. Hope you understood the topic well. Thank you.